very warm welcome to you from myself, Reverend Clive Hicks, and on behalf of the Heart of Westmoreland Mission Community to this act of worship for the first Sunday after Trinity Sunday. We will be considering a gospel reading and listening to the thoughts of a well-respected Baptist minister as we reflect together on our sense of call and sense of purpose in dealing with evil and injustice in the world. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. From the chaos of darkness, your word shaped the earth, and your image a people made. But we traded perfection, truth for a lie, and your glory was veiled in shame. But a promise made, a blessing you gave. To a people of your name For this broken world A saviour foretold To bear all our grief and pain When the heavenly sea Sended his throne, all my sin on his shoulders lay. And to win our redemption, he suffered and died for the sake of my guilt and shame. All the price he paid in taking my place, so that death was all. Yeah. 
a reading from Mark's Gospel. Then Jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this they went to take charge of him for they said he is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said he is possessed by Beelzebul by the prince of demons he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus's mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. And then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Mary Coates writes that one of her greatest heroes of the faith is the 19th century African-American preacher and evangelist Sojourner Truth. She'd been born into slavery, sold as a child to other masters and forced as a young woman to marry an older slave she didn't love. But then, some years later, she was liberated. A Quaker couple took her into their home, purchased her from her master at a great price and then announced to her that she was a free woman. Sojourner explains in her autobiography how she stayed on freely with the couple after this, working as a help. They were good people and treated her well. But as time went on, she began desperately to miss her old slave friends and family and for all the horrors of her former life, still longed for their company. One terrible night, it all got too much for her and she decided to return to her old life. But she was prevented from doing so by a sudden, overwhelming experience of the presence of God, which pinned her to the spot and kept her from going anywhere. This experience was to change her life forever. Instead of allowing her to return to her slave's life where she would again serve the unjust values it obscenely represented, God was to send her off in a new direction, to live in a wholly different way. Mary says that when she reads the gospel story for today, it seems to her that if Jesus chooses not to go out to his mother and brothers, who understandably come looking for him, it is not because he has stopped loving them or caring about them, but because to return home with them would be to take a step backwards. It would mean returning to the old value system and the divisive and unjust rigidity of its traditions and boundaries. In the ancient world, a son was expected to live in obedience to his father and follow his father's trade. 
This signified his acceptance of religious, social and cultural norms and his willingness to conform to the status quo. But the purpose of Jesus' ministry was not to support the status quo, but to proclaim the kingdom of God. Using the image of binding the strong man, Jesus asserts that he is called to confront and overcome the power of evil in all its guises. A return to the old lifestyle is impossible. As children, we often absorb our parents' values in a sponge-like way. And just as Jesus must have learnt strong and righteous values in the home of Joseph and Mary, the values we learn from our parents may well be good and true and set us off on the right track. Yet, as we grow up, we naturally begin to reassess and test our, out attitudes that earlier we accepted without question. We may move away from certain values or take a stand against particular points of view that our parents never thought to doubt. This is an entirely natural and important process of our development and growth and needs to continue throughout our life. But when we journey away from the ways and wisdom of our parents, which ways and wisdom do we journey towards? It is all too easy to simply absorb the current attitudes of the society that surrounds us and to exchange unquestioning acceptance of the values of the people who brought us up for those of contemporary culture, just replacing the flawed old status quo for a flawed new one. Today's Gospel reading invites us to take a different direction. When God calls us from the old ways, it is to free us to turn towards the values of his kingdom, standing against the powers of evil and seeking to bind the strong man in whatever shape or form he manifests himself. The strong man that Sojourner Truth was called to bind was made known in the evil of slavery. And following her powerful and mysterious experience of God, she became a passionate abolitionist, preaching to white audiences. By sharing her own experiences of slavery, she hoped to turn her listeners from its horrors. Yet, not unlike the Lord she followed, she was often vilified by pro-slavery members of her audiences who considered that if only she had a proper relationship with God, she would give up preaching and understand that slavery was all part of God's plan. In the face of violent opposition, she remained true to the values of the kingdom of God. Just as Jesus refused to be turned from his course by those who thought he was off his head, or in cahoots with the devil himself, we too are challenged to stay true to kingdom values. Many fears, hatreds and divides tear our world apart, while new forms of slavery never cease to rear their heads. As followers of Christ today, and as members of God's family charged with doing his will, we are called in our turn to recognise where evil is at work and to commit ourselves to binding the strong man. How and where shall we speak out? 
What actions shall we take? Personally, Personally, as like as a Christian, like a Christian. how we like to respond, I think, is that God calls all of us to love our neighbour, right? He said that was the most important commandment. Pray and just believe in that Jesus is there. He's already took the blame. He's already conquered this world, if you like, for us. So we've got nothing to fear when it comes to evil. I would like to respond with compassion. Well, look to the cross. It's, it can be an easy answer, a pat answer, but to say, I believe in, in a God who came down to earth and who died for me and who went through the worst suffering that could ever possibly happen. Sometimes it means standing up and saying, hey, you stop that. Often it means getting to the ballot box. God is there to, to judge. We can't judge. We can only help and to guide and to stand up against things that we feel are evil or wrong. Where there's a call for a response for volunteers or for financial giving or, or something, if I am able, um, and if that seems right, then trying to be part of that response. For me, for me personally, I think that verse that says, if you know the good that you should do and you don't do it, that's a sin. I think that's kind of a, a baseline. Our call is the most radical call of all, to love our enemy as we love ourselves, and that is possibly the most difficult thing to do of all, but it's, only, it's the only way of overcoming the evil of our world. I think Christians respond to evil and injustice with broken hearts. Uh, we should feel it, we should take it on, but then joy should come.
God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. And Father, we pray for those who are anxious, those who are feeling isolated in any way. We pray for peace. We pray, Father, that you would deal with the strong man in all our lives where we feel bound and in difficulty, Father, because of our own weaknesses, our own failings. Lord, we pray that you would lift each one up. Lord, that you would lift each one into a fresh place where they may speak boldly of your love and your truth. And Father, we pray especially for those who are sick at this time, praying, Father, for your healing touch in their lives. Lord, that they may be conscious of the, your warm embrace and that they may be conscious of your work in their hearts, in their bodies, in their minds. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.